Hey, welcome everybody. This is Jason with Inside Cool Music Magazine. And today we are here with our special guest, Jake Jackson, who is a musician, an author, an artist, and a music pedagogue. And uh, Jake, I just have to say you uh, are a truly a Renaissance man. And uh, do you eat Wheaties every morning or you just eat nothing but vegetables? <laughs> How do you have so much energy to do all these things? <laughs> Well, it's not quite like that. Yeah, I'm I'm perhaps older than I seem, so <laughs> things work in cycles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, um, as I said, you do a little bit of everything. Yeah. So what is your background? You know, it seems like a good place to start just because there's so much. I mean, I found you because of this book right over my shoulder here, Guitar Chords, which I absolutely love. And uh, we'll get to that. That's one of over 30 books that you've done. But, um, but as I said, you've done a little bit of everything. You've written books for guitar, ukulele, piano, songwriting, some music theory aspects. So what is your background? How did you get into all these things you do? Well, I think I, essentially I'm, I regard myself as a creative person. I'm not really interested in making bags of money. Mm -hmm. um, I'm much more interested in, I suppose, leading a fulfilling life um, and uh, engaging with people, connecting with people, exploring and uh, different things and interesting things in as many ways as possible. Um, I use, I, I work with my hands. I love my hands on on wood in particular, for instance, and therefore actually playing the guitar <laughs> is, is perfect. <laughs> but I also I do paint and I do write, and I've done all of those things really throughout my life. I don't regard myself as a particularly talented I think m m I'm more interested in the kind of homogeneity of how you create things um, how you as I said how you engage with people mm -hmm. and so different during different parts of my life I've um, I, I've had good connections uh, so I've always always written very since I was very young uh, and and painted since I was very very young um, so yeah, so that those are kind of light motifs throughout my life the music came a little bit later to the extent that I wasn't surrounded by music when I was younger. Um, my mother actually, uh, she went to the Royal Ballet, but had a really bad experience when she was very young and left. So she pretty much banned music. In really? the house. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so it took me quite a while, but um, I remember hearing the Rites of Spring for the first time. And it was like the doors were blown off my head. <laughs> uh, um, and, uh, you know, quite a lot of, then I kind of re reversed in time. I listened to a lot of jazz and sort of Miles Davis and all that kind of stuff. Um, and suddenly I found connections between what I was writing and what I was painting with, with the music. Because music, some people regard music as a higher art form. Mm -hmm. And that's problematic because it isn't necessarily a higher art form. It is... Uh, it is a way that people express themselves. And I, it's interesting. I think we all try to find uh, a, a voice, our own voice, and a way to express it. Mm -hmm. And my way happens to be through these, these three different, particularly strong things in my life. Um, and so uh, I, I played with a friend who's Scottish, a Scottish friend. I played a lot of folk and drone, Celtic drone music, weirdly, uh, in my 20s. And that ta taught me a lot of the stuff about... Um, the acoustic guitar, but I really loved uh, Paco de Lucia when I was younger and John McLaughlin and, and I, I picked up a, a, a book by um, uh, uh, Paco Pena, I think it was, um, and just worked my way through various soliares and um, it just sort of, sort of a, a magic and a beauty to the, to the sound really, really struck me. And it just all feels like the same. So when if I'm painting or if I'm writing, if I'm playing music, somehow it's, it manifests in the same sort of way within my head. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think music is very much a, for me, music is, it comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, as I got older, I've ended up doing a lot of music theory um, just because I, it's just interesting and I'm very interested in structures. Mm -hmm. So I, I love working, peep, working out interesting and different ways of doing things. So, you know, the blues, everyone plays the blues. So um, that, that, I've never really been my heartland. I, I've always tried to sort of just find something else really. Um, and just so finding why one chord works with another or, or, or why a building, an arch, why does an arch work? You know, what is what are the stresses in the pillars mm -hmm. that make that work? It's very much the same on a piece of music. So I, I have a very structural way of writing music um, uh, and, and, and songwriting. And I wrote, I got a little, a little file of facts to my, yeah, I, I, I was bought this from when I was about 21. 
Really? And I wrote a hundred songs in it. Uh, and I, I can't vouch for any, any more of them, but two of them. <laughs> but every single one of them had something new about it and I could build something around it. It was just, right. I just, just love doing it really. So um, that, that's, so from an early age, I've always tried to explore things mm-hmm. and I've tried to work with different people and in, you know, interesting people always try to, to seek out uh, as you get older, of course, you, know, you have, you have family commitments and that, that completely changes things. Yeah. I find I, I still love, as you were talking about, you know, just the, the, uh, the process of things and making things work. I find the personally pen or pencil onto paper, the feeling, the connection kind of helps me as I'm working on uh, writing a piece. I'm, you know, mostly a writer, uh, a little poetry and I play guitar and whatnot, but you know, kind of that aspect to it instead of, you know, typing it on a phone or a tablet or whatever. But, I think um, I think I do think that's right. I think um, I think the, the process of writing, although that may be a generational thing, but the process right. of writing is def- makes you more thoughtful. I love the feel of a of, of a paintbrush on mm-hmm. canvas for that reason. It's a kind of it's like a sort of electric creative process. It's very strange, and it, it does come a point where it takes over. Right, and that's 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 something I absolutely love. You know, it doesn't always come or come, does it? And sometimes right. it takes. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't come on a particular piece and you just have to kill your little darlings, but uh, you right. know, it's very important. <laughs> so you play obviously guitar, but uh, you know, you write books on piano, ukulele, you write songs. Um, what did you start with? Did you start on a guitar and kind of expand from there or have you always yeah. dabbled in everything? No, I'm, I am, I'm mainly a guitarist. Mm. I, I write uh, for lots of instruments. Um, I think the thing about the guitar and it took me quite a while to realize it. It's a very particular kind of instrument because, because um, the way the octaves work on the guitar, and I'm a great fan of, of, of um, using open strings mm. as much as possible. But that's quite interesting because it does limit you to three or four keys, mm. uh, which work really well, you know, the, the E and the A and the D in particular. Mm. Um, and you can, you can do all sorts of things on a guitar that you can't do any, on any other instrument. But actually, once you start to want to hear something slightly different, you know, an E flat kind of sound or, 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 or a G sharp or something like that as a, as a key, you do need to reach for a piano. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, in working with other people, I've had to often communicate with, in a different way. And sometimes that's just been sitting down and writing something with them or transposing something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it becomes very different. But now my core instrument really is the guitar. Uh, I can play the ukulele. I can, I can stumble across a piano, but I, I, I write a lot on, you know, on the computer as well. Inevitably, mm. uh, Sibelius is my favorite software. I absolutely love it oh, um, nice. because it, it, it gives you back <laughs> the, and with the most brilliant sound, what, what you're doing and then kind of adds to it really. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I use logic now. I used to use Cubase a lot. Um, mm-hmm. But that's a good way of working out lines. And, and so I was talking to you earlier about structures and chords. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, I, I haven't got a, a, a classical training. I did do music um, song grades, singing grades when I was younger, mm-hmm. um, but not, not particularly far, not particularly well. Um, so I've always, in a band setting, I've always been a, a backing singer or I've written the songs for other people to perform. Mm-hmm. Um, but 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 when you when you structure uh, something for for a piano, it is slightly different. You know, you've got the two the two hands. Um, so when when it so I did the guitar books first. Okay. So my heartland. Um, but it is very interesting when you start thinking about how piano plays work because a classically trained piano does piano player does not need and doesn't look for a chord book. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, either, they know what they're doing. And the last thing they want is a chord because it isn't how they think. Right. And if I look at, um, I've been doing some stuff with the Egmont Overture recently. And to me, as a musician, in the way I think, it, it's just a progression of giant chords, mm-hmm. which is interesting. But of course, it's got all these different parts for all these different instruments, or all with melodies and counter melodies. But in a band setting, you know, a keyboard player, as opposed to a pianist, has got to work in really quite a different way, often with just one hand mm-hmm. <laughs> rather than the two. And so, so my way into a, for the, to the chord books was really to show how uh, someone can fit within a band setting. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, if effectively, if the guitarist is playing in, in the f- first position and you've got a soloist who might be actually in the third, then there's a, there's a pocket 
for the for the keyboard player to fit in mm-hmm. um, or the keyboard uh, is going to be working as part of the rhythm section well how how are they how are they doing that it's quite different really from a, a piano in a classical sense right um, and I, I I'm I have I've known many classical pianists my daughter is, is a grade eight pianist she her, her she reads music very well um, inevitably um, but she can't improvise mm-hmm. um, and it's very interesting. Well, my son is a jazz trumpeter. Mm-hmm. He's twenty seven. Tw- he studied music at, at uni, um, and he thinks in 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 melodies because he's a trumpet player. <laughs> right. So he and I have, have to kind of slightly translate what we say. Something he's doing something for one of my songs at the moment, and I mm-hmm. played him the lines on my guitar, written it out, and then he's transposing it up and will send me something possibly quite different. I don't know, <laughs> but it, that, but all, all of this is, I think, just a way of exploring the container of music mm-hmm. and how it manifests itself, how it, how it, ex- how it expresses itself through many, many different voices. <laughs> I found your book. I'm uh, probably an intermediate guitar player. I played a lot when I was a child, wanted to go to school for it. And I developed uh, tendonitis in both my wrists. So I couldn't oh. play anymore for probably 10 or 15 years. And I picked it back up and I dabble. And for the last couple of years now, I've been playing much more, um, but, you know, that was, I don't want to say how long ago that was when I was a kid in high school, <laughs> play, jamming on my electric guitar to hair bands in the 80s, you know. But uh, so now I play acoustic. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, as, as most people do, I find an app on my phone to, to learn songs and I need to learn a chord I don't know. So I had to stop everything I'm doing, do the search, find the chord. And I found your book um, on Amazon and I just, and it's just, you know, guitar chords and it's fantastic because it has, it goes through all the keys. There's a tab section right on, you flip right to it. First position, second position. And I don't have to stop everything I'm doing. I just have to open the book. And it is, it is fantastic for, as you were saying, you know, a professional person, you know, they already know these things, yeah. um, but that's obviously not who it's written for. It's written more no. for people like me and people, um, you know, a little below, a little above my level who need yeah, that people reference. starting up. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's fantastic. So how did you decide to write, start writing books? You started with gu- guitar, which is your main instrument, but what, um, you know, how did you decide to well, create such a book like that? Well, so, yeah, so uh, there are lots of paths into it, but uh, uh, this was just before, this is 2005, 2006, so before the internet was a b- big thing, before mm-hmm. apps were a big thing, before phones were a big thing, I think it's just before the, uh, the first iPhone, something like that. Um, and actually, a lot of what you say is very, very important because cause I, <laughs> in my 30s, I went through, uh, through a, a few bands, and, of course, you, you played with a group of people, and the most annoying thing was playing with a lead guitarist who was brilliant, but couldn't, didn't understand music at all. So <laughs> right. we had to find a way of working with each other. Right. Um, and so I'd, ha- I'd be shouting the chord as, it start, as we were playing along. Um, and, so that he, and he knew the shapes, so I'd just shout the chord. <laughs> so, so I ended up writing them out for him instead, you know, yeah. just on a big piece of uh, a sheet of paper, one there, the next one, the next one, the next one, just so that he could get it right. quickly. Um, and the thing about that format is that you'll see it's wire bound. Yep, I love that. Just it's designed to right fit up. on your knee. Mm-hmm. You know, you just look at that, flick it over, put it on. The, is, uh, and and um, you can put it in your gig case or, you know, it's floppy enough to, to fit in a soft bag, that kind mm-hmm. of thing. So it has a lot of seriously practical uses. And this was at a time when if you try to sell a book into the book stores, they want a flat spine. Mm-hmm. Because because they're going to put its spine out. Well, a I don't want its spine out. <laughs> <laughs> right. B of course, if it's like this, that it's never going to get picked up. Because what on earth is it? Right. But in a music store, which is really where it needs to be, it's it's flat out, it, and people just see it for what it is. So I, I, my, I suppose I have a mission with these kinds of books is that is just clarity. Mm-hmm. They've got to be quick and easy, so that you can find your own voice, find your own way into into the music. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, and and that's was why I, I did have quite a lot of trouble with let's uh, let's say professional musicians on this. I had um, on those books because they really insist they really wanted them to start with C the C chord uh, uh, C key rather than work its way through. And my experience of working bands is actually no one really they don't have a structured view of that. 
they just want to find the chord. And right. you know, so what's the simplest way of doing it? A to Z, well, right. A to G. And then you flick through it and you find it and you just move on. So that's, that's, that's the most important thing, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, I'm very interested, you know, looking over your website and uh, emailing with you and talking with you a little bit. I'm fascinated that you play flamenco guitar. And uh, you had an album that came out, um, was it 2012? Yeah. Yep. And so, so tell me a little bit about that. I, you know, flamenco guitar is, is fascinating to me. I'm, uh, uh, I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I do the old, I, I use a pick and just play. Um, how did you get into that? And, uh, you know, do you still, is that still kind of your primary form? I know you said you're going to be getting into some rock bands soon, or do you just. Well, no. So, so yeah. So, so I'm, I'm now more hesitant to use that phrase flamenco. It's flamenco esque. It's quasi flamenco. Okay. I'm a, I'm a white guy um, <laughs> in a modern world, and I and I don't want to appropriate someone else's tradition. It's Anglo flamenco, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Yes. But I absolutely love it, um, and I don't know why. There's none of it. No tradition in my family, but as soon as I heard Paco de la Thea, um, the, uh, another another door was blown off in my head, <laughs> um, and I've never never given up. And it's it's something about the progression. I think there's a in 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 scales and modes. There's a Phrygian mode, which is the fifth, which is the, the fifth above the, t- the the root note, um, and you're playing in the Phrygian mode all the time in in um, in class in um, uh, uh, flamenco music, mm-hmm. and it gives a completely different flavour. And, if, and, and the easiest way into that is to play uh, an A minor into a G, which you would never hear in, in a standard blues progression. Um, and also an, an, an F sharp minor um, uh, down to an E minor. Those, those kind of two ends of things um, just, just shape the, 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 the voicing. And I've somehow that's always just picked me up. So I, I always go back. Um, I'm the proud owner of about 15 guitars. Wonderful. Um, I always say I have more guitars than talent. <laughs> not, not being modest. Um, and I, I, um, I got this flame red um, uh, flamenco guitar, which I bought in Jerez. Oh. And it's, it is actually, funny enough, it isn't the best guitar, mm-hmm. but somehow I always go back to it. It's uh, every night I play it. Yeah. Um, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't spend hours on it, but every night I do play it mm-hmm. because it just feels good. I love the feel of it. I love the, the resonance of it. I love the knocking on the, mm-hmm. I like to knock the wood and um, run up and down the, and the, the, that quite flat fretboard. Mm-hmm. And I've got a lovely cut- cutaway Ramirez as well, which is a, um, uh, a flamenco guitar, but I've also got a Yamaha Spanish guitar, Spanish classical guitar. I think, I think we're all, I think it's a mistake that, um, People, a lot of people think that when you take up music, you end up just doing one thing, but right. actually you shouldn't. You should listen to lots of different things. I frequently listen to music I think I don't like, but I'm interested in the bass line mm-hmm. uh, or I'm interested in the, the chord progression or the percussion or, you know, there's always something to learn from, from other, other music. And Yeah, so, I think, you know, especially today, everybody's so specialized and you, you know, if you only focus on one thing, as you said, you're missing so much more you can't really expand your horizons if you if you keep them you know narrowed in on one little channel i think especially when you're starting up and, mm-hmm. I'm, and let's face it we're all learning aren't we as we, as we right. go, go through but when you when you start up uh, it's very easy just to listen to one type of music because you because that's all you're exposed to right and i think it's very important to seek out other music and seek out other musicians and um uh, you know that if if you if you've Often you don't know what's out there. You just you just got to find something else, mm-hmm. um, and you might not like it, so you might go back. But you know, always try. So, what would you say? You know, kind of the uh, you know the responsibility of a of a teacher or writer, pedagogue such as yourself. Um, you know, responsibility to people who are learning, or you know, maybe more simply, you know, what is one of the basic lessons that you feel people need to know about music in general? Um, if they want to learn or, or like I did, they had stopped for a while for whatever reason, picking it back up, maybe later in life. Um, you know, uh, what would you say to them who are, you know, listening to our interview here and, and thinking, you know, maybe I should pick it back up or I wish I was better, but I don't really play as much as I should. Yeah. Well, I think, um, I, I remember one mistake I made when I was very young, which was I bought a guitar uh which was 
inexpensive. I had no real idea about um, what I should be buying. But I realized years later, I had a t- terrible time with it because the action was so high. Mm-hmm. And there are just one or two things which are barriers to playing and getting a decent sound. If the action is so high, you can't, especially with fingers which aren't used to pressing down, right. you, you can't make a decent sound. And it's very easy. There's some sort of ridiculous statistic that um, 80 or 90% of people who pick up the guitar don't pursue it. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure it's partly that kind of thing, really. No one tells you that, that you're, of course, your fingers are going to hurt. Right. And it'll take a while. But start with a, a Spanish guitar or an electric guitar mm-hmm. before you go into a steel string guitar and toughen up those, toughen, toughen up those fingers. It sounds like it's a really obvious thing. But, <laughs> and, and the other thing I remember also hitting, hitting the guitar too hard. So uh, I remember holding the pick like that. Mm-hmm. rather than like that. I remember seeing a friend who what, it just seemed very odd that he would hold the pick like that, but actually it gave him more control and he was very light fingered mm-hmm. and you find people bashing away. And of course, that's another reason why it doesn't sound good. Right. Another thing about the, the reason why the blues works for people uh, early on is that they can quickly get a sound out of an E and an A and a D um, and the quicker we people get into that, the better, because once they start to toughen up their hands, then they can start playing with it. I mean, I'm, I, as I said right earlier on, I was, I'm a great advocate for open strings. So mm-hmm. I play a lot of sixths and ninths only because uh, I can move the shape of the, of the, the main uh, chord up the neck and leave the top two open um, or the bottom one open. And so, you, so it, it plays. So you, so you, so you find different, different sounds from the guitar and the more the more you can get a good sound the the, the easier you'll find and the easier to, you'll find to explore and i think the other thing is not to be put off by how good people are on instagram yes oh my goodness me. that's a great point <laughs> i mean good i mean incredible players um unbelievably stylish yeah incredibly good at, <laughs> at, at um, uh, social media and you know, riffing away. But if you don't understand what you're riffing, mm-hmm. ultimately you're not you're not you haven't got longevity around it. So I think I think watching those things is great for inspiration. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say uh, I would just just get into some of the basic scales and the modes, mm-hmm. just to play up the notes, use tabs, do anything you can to find your way around the fretboard, mm-hmm. because that's something that, that people don't really understand at first. You know, the, the magic of the guitar, uh, as Steve Hackett always says, is like a, a, a mini orchestra. The magic of the guitar is you, you've got these octaves everywhere, which, of course, means you've got the same note all the way up the strings. Mm-hmm. So you can play up, up the neck, down the neck, um, and, and you know, just understanding where to go, to play the same notes vertically, horizontally. Though that kind of really under, try and do everything you can to understand the, the fretboard of the guitar. So I think there, there's, you know, there's loads of other things I could say, but those are, those are a few little things I would start with. <laughs> That's great. Excellent advice. Now, what are you working on um, currently and what do you have uh, coming down the road here? Um, I've got quite a lot really. Um, I mean, as you'll know, you, 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 you have to fit things around everything else. And, right. and you also I think have to be quite determined <laughs> because life gets in the way, exhaustion <laughs> gets in the way. Absolutely. Uh, I think you only live once. So I think you've got to, you just got to do the things that work for you in, and enjoy them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got, so I've got, I've got a new series of uh, little books uh, coming sometime next year, um, which look more seriously at the first, second and third positions mm-hmm. uh, of, of chords and uh, in, in all the various different instruments, because uh, I think it's, I think I want to do more with, Getting helping people to understand what root, the root note is and why that makes any sense at all, right. and how therefore to play with a group of other in, other musicians. So uh, you know, playing with as I as, as slightly said earlier, but some if you're playing in a band with two guitarists, of course you've got to play in different positions, right? Um, through the, the main part of the song, or or not play at all. You know, you don't have to play all the time, <laughs> but if you do, <laughs> play play in different positions of the neck. You can play the same chord. So I don't want to explore that that much more, which goes into sort of fretboard stuff and a book on chord progressions, which I'm doing at the moment. Um, but but more interesting in some ways, from my point of view, 
I am, I'm, I've written uh, the songs for an album. Uh, I've got 16 songs. The album's called uh, uh, One Tree, Many Roots, which is um, uh, actually a, a line from a Tony Allen, who's an Afrobeats guy, uh, Afrobeat guy, as opposed to Afrobeats. Um, he's fantastic. I, lo I love Afrobeat music. Uh, but One, One Tree, Many Roots, where I'm featuring um, individual musicians um, who are either you know, virtuosos or, but add another layer of interest and, and, in, and bringing someone in always forces me to rewrite something, which I like. Right. And different people are, I, I'd like to engage people early on just to see at what point they want to be brought in. Some people just want to come in and just do their part and go, mm. and they do it brilliantly. <laughs> Other people like a bit more involvement or, or prefer a different key or, and of course that forces me to think in a different way, as I said. So, right. so that, that, that's, that's probably the main thing I'm, I'm doing. I have a podcast, uh, which is actually for my science fiction, but I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be interviewing um, some of the artists, as in the music artists, for that over the next year, uh, as as part of the the, the the involvement in the process, as well as other science fiction writers. So, um, quite a few things going on. Well, this has been fascinating. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. I really appreciate it. Um, where can, so people, everyone who's watched this, of course, they're going to be totally fascinated and want to buy everything you've done. <laughs> so, um, so where can people find out uh, more about you online, uh, your music, your books, uh, everything that you do, your art, uh, where can people uh, go to find out more? Well, my core website is thesefantasticworlds.com. Uh, and from there, there are various links to other, you know, I have a music website and an art website, but ultimately thesefantasticworlds.com. Um, and that leads you also to the podcast, which is available on every podcast provider, you know, Apple and so on, mm -hmm. uh, Google, Spotify. Um, but as an Amazon author as well, or rather an author on Amazon um, um, and available at lots of bookstores if they would order it. Um, I have an author page there uh, where you, you very kindly put up that book, but uh, mm -hmm. there, there are a number of other titles as well. Yes, yeah. a lot of great titles. That was the only one I had, so. I thought one's better than none. Well, that's great. Perfectly placed. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Well, thanks again. So uh, everybody, uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, this interview. Please make sure that you check out our website, InsideCoolMusicMag.com, our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, where uh, this video, of course, will be on YouTube, plus an article on our website, and uh, sign up for our newsletter. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much, Jake. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.